Ephesians 4, 1 through 6. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you all were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. One faith, one Lord, one baptism. But yet it's called the doctrine of baptisms. Is this a contradiction? No, not at all. Welcome to 6FT. We're going to be dealing with the doctrine of baptisms. In this particular passage here in Ephesians 4, it lets you know what Paul and all the disciples wanted to accomplish with the congregations at that time. They wanted them to speak the same thing, have the same experience, and do the same things. In fact, when you look at Paul's writings, that was his goal. When you look at John's writings, that was his goal. When you look at Peter's writings, that was his goal. The goal was unity. And unity comes in this fashion, believing the same thing, trusting the same God, and doing the same works. But I do need to explain baptism, and that what baptism means to dip. Sometimes it means to submerge. In fact, we use that particular definition, those of us who are much more of the uh, reform persuasion. But getting away from that, I understand baptism to be submersion by the scriptures. That is how I understand it. But I want to get into baptism more for what's behind it, because I'm not into dotting I's and crossing T's on every subject. I love fruit bearing. So please bear with me. I'm going to share with you what I believe the doctrine of baptisms are. And there are three listed in scripture that are distinct. There's the baptism of repentance that John um, gave. Uh, as he came on the scene to uh, prepare the way for Jesus. And then there was believer's baptism, which was instituted after the Lord resurrected from the dead and the day of Pentecost would pursue everybody that was baptized in the name of Jesus, which is the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Because that's what Jesus said himself. They understood it to mean Jesus because in the book of Acts, they all baptize in the name of Jesus. You never see them baptizing, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit from the book of Acts on. But baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit is not wrong. It can't be. Jesus said it. But they understood that the revelation of that was the name of Jesus. And this is what the Philippians says, that God has highly exalted him and giving him a, a name that is above all names, that at the sound of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to God the Father. So that's the name that they baptized in. But back to baptisms. We had three uh, written in scripture. That was the baptism of repentance under John, and we discussed that in the earlier videos. And then it's the believer's baptism, which Jesus instituted for the disciples. When you look at the book of Acts, they baptized in Jesus' name. And then there's the baptism of power, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is there for Christian service in power, in demonstration. There's been a lot of debate over the years if you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit at the moment of your conversion. And I don't like to argue that, but what I want to do is take a look at the scriptures. The first one I want to deal with is John's baptism. Now, John's baptism is included in believer's baptism because you have to have that element of repentance and turning from 
the old life, turning to the new life, when you give your life to Jesus Christ, then you're baptized to Jesus unto death, but you are raised as the symbol of baptism to newness of life when you come out of the water. So we call that believer's baptism because you don't do it until you come to faith. Now, I am not a proponent of infant baptism, but not because I'm against it. I just don't believe a child at that point realizes how serious it is to receive Jesus Christ because a person can't be baptized into the family of God by water baptism. It has to be accompanied by faith. This is the only pattern we have in scripture, but we're gonna take time to go through this in depth. Now, the other one I'm very, very concerned about, and that is the baptism of power what we call the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And whenever it is mentioned, it is always associated with some form of power or demonstration of that which promotes the gospel of the kingdom. From the day of Pentecost on, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, when we see it manifesting, we see a gospel, a demonstration of power through the believers. So in this particular series, we're going to get into these. Now today, I just want to say that baptism has its first essence on the inside. And when we go, when we go to the next video, I'm going to deal with baptism from John's um, era and what had to happen to make that baptism real. We're going to deal with that, and I think you're going to like it. Well, God bless you, and I sure hope that you will join us for this extensive study on baptism. I'm not going to get into a million scriptures. That's not what I mean. I'm going to go into all the major points that make baptism what it is. God bless you, and I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye. Outreach, prayer, media, missions. Partner with us for the harvest. We are seeing great things in five villages in Bangladesh. And also in Ara Ijibu and Idu, Nigeria. God is moving to meet the needs of people with the gospel and the initials. Bishop Dalum Ghazi is raising up ministry in Deshua, Bangladesh. And they are doing the work in ministry in power. Austin Ezza is also doing a great work as he raises up relationships that God gives him to build wells in Nigeria bringing communities together. So Tanda and I have the privilege of being able to support through prayer, watching God unfold his grace and mercy upon the people and bringing fresh water to those in need in Nigeria and also in Bangladesh. We see God's faithful love and we see what he will do to reach out to people. This is the time I want to invite you. God is moving in the 1040 window and we support mostly from home. So Tana takes a trip once a year, but we do most of our work from home because God is moving all over the world, particularly in that 1040 window. Please come and be a part. Partner with us for the harvest. You may contact us at www.gsmi.life.